We just got back to the hotel here in Panama City after having had a delicious breakfast. And we are all packed up and we're about to head out to the airport, but we just wanted to let you know of something that happened while we were at breakfast. So who I can only assume was homeless, I'm not sure if there were any mental health issues going on as well, came into the restaurant cafeteria where we were having breakfast and he came over to Nick motioning to ask for his food and Nick said no and then he motioned to my food and we said no and then he just grabbed my food and touched it and tried to take it and I don't even know what happened because it happened so quickly. Nick said that like I held his wrist and was like, no, because he actually didn't make out with the piece of bread that he grabbed. And I have to commend the staff of the restaurant as well as the other patrons because they were absolutely shocked and acted as horrified as we were about this incident. They were also extremely quick to act in the situation as well. As soon as we started kicking up a fuss, there was somebody instantly there who was basically shooing this person out of the restaurant, away from us and away from all of the other patrons. So in terms of how the staff acted in the situation, it was exemplary. And then afterwards, they then came in, checked in on us, asked us if we wanted to switch out our food, which for the one piece that he did touch, then we did ask for that, but otherwise everything was very much resolved and everything seemed to be more or less okay after that. And we just want to make it clear that you should still come to Panama City. We have felt so safe the entire time and it is an absolutely beautiful city and country full of history and it plays such an integral role in the world of especially commerce, but it just acted as a reminder that you shouldn't have like your cell phone or camera just sitting out on the table because I feel like had we had those items out on the table, he may have reached for those as well. So it's just a reminder to be vigilant. But I also want to say that this kind of thing happens in the UK and Canada as well. This was just a freak incident and it was one individual. Absolutely. We've been to over 20 countries during our travels now and I think this was the first time that somebody actually motioned to take anything from us at all. Yeah. And to be honest, with the way that he acted, it reminded me of a few incidents that we've had even just in our home city of Toronto and a couple of other places even in North America and Europe in the way that they acted and the way they approached us and all of that kind of thing. So please do not take this as kind of any damning statement about Panama, about Latin America, or anything like that, because we have encountered nothing but friendly, helpful, and approachable locals. This one person doing this thing was just serving as a reminder to just be vigilant about security anywhere in the world, really. Yeah, I think that one incident over the course of 12 months is not bad. And as Nick said, actually the people that we've met while in Latin America have been some of the most friendly and helpful and kind. So, but we just wanted to share this because this is the reality of travel. So it's important that you know that these things do occasionally happen. A hundred percent. It's not all peaches and cream all the time, despite what social media and sometimes our own YouTube videos may have you believe. Stuff does go wrong. Things do happen that you can't foresee and you just do your best to adapt and work through it. But overall, this one incident didn't harm us, so we're moving on and we are heading to the airport. Five minutes later, but only nine dollars and eighty cents later, we have arrived at the airport.
our year of travel, this is the first time we've ever taken a shower in the lounge, considering how many of the lounges we've visited provide complimentary showers with lounge access, but highly recommend this. I feel like a new woman, and this bathroom is absolutely modern, it's huge, it's clean, they provide shampoo, conditioner, and soap, so you are really all taken care of. But now that I've freshened it up, I'm going to give you a tour of the rest of the lounge. I feel like this lounge is so massive, you could get lost, so I don't really know which direction to go, but this is what we're starting with. And here we are, an all new lounge here in Panama City. And so with that, we are going to be giving this an all new rating. So just to be clear, this is the Hope Club Lounge here at Terminal 2 in Panama City Airport. And before we do give it a rating, I just want to say that we have read reviews online that none of the lounges here in Panama City were great. So our expectations were good. In terms of food, that is definitely what brought this down that's what those reviews were talking about and so there's very limited food selection for breakfast there were bagels cream cheese jam butter a little bit of oatmeal but that was really it there was a little bit of fruit and yogurt but there was really nothing hot it was just so limited and the quality of it is okay the bagels were a little bit stale so with that we're giving it a three out of ten Unfortunately though, this is where the bad stuff ends and the rest of the good stuff really begins because when it came to drinks, then we had a really good range of stuff available. Basically, as long as you weren't asking for cocktails, then more or less you had everything that you could possibly shake the stick out. So you had access to water, soda fountains, coffee, tea, pretty much the most beverages, again, unless you're asking for cocktails because they even had hot liquors for spirits and mixes. The only downside, and this is another thing that we'll be counting against it, is the fact that there was nothing portable that we could take with us. So with that, then we're going to be giving that an 8. In terms of cleanliness, this entire lounge is very clean. The staff come around regularly to pick up, so with that we're giving it a 9. We are also going to be giving a 9 to the comfort level, because first of all, this lounge is absolutely huge, so you feel like you always have plenty of space. 
And in terms of the seating options, there are many to choose from depending on the type of experience that you want at the lounge. So with that, a nine is 100% justified. In terms of amenities, this lounge really stands out. There are showers, and we did use them, and they were absolutely lovely. There's Wi-Fi, there's charging ports, there's also a business center, and even within that business center, there's an open area, but there's also individual rooms if you need privacy. There's a screening room with a huge TV. So this has quite a bit of facilities to use. So with that, we're giving it an 8 out of 10. And when you total all of that up, that comes to a 37. It's kind of a shame, honestly, that there aren't better food options because if it had been for decent food options available here, then this would have been up there with some of the best lounges that we've visited during our travels. As it stands though, without that, then this only really ranks around the mid table. But all the same, we have still enjoyed our time here and we have made do despite that. Now it's time to go board our plane. We've just arrived to Hostel Badio SV and we have a family room for four nights. This is costing us 168 Canadian dollars. We have a TV, we have air conditioning, and let's go see what the bathroom looks like. I assume this one is it, but there's that door over there too. Yeah, this is the bathroom. Turn the light on. Mirror, sink, toilet. Ooh, looks like a pretty nice shower in here. Yeah. However, there's only one tap, which probably means it's not going to be super hot water. And we have extra toilet paper and soap. Always nice. After about an hour's flight and a 20 minute Uber, we are now here at our accommodation here in Cartagena. And it looks awesome, as I'm sure you can see from the tour. The reason that we decided to get the Uber was because we were actually advised by our accommodation. Not sure if there's public transport links, we didn't really look into it. We just went with what we were told. So don't come at us if you think that's a very bougie option or whatever. We're just doing what we were told for the purposes of security. And it cost all of eight Canadian dollars. Exactly. So it's not like we've lost a lot of money on it. But we have basically a free day for now. We're not planning on doing a massive amount. So we will pick this up tomorrow when we are planning on doing a massive amount. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.